G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're not going to look at any stories today. Uh, I'll follow up with that tomorrow. Today I thought we'd have a look at some of the projects I've invested in and how they're looking in the market at the moment. Now again, none of this is ever financial advice. These are just projects that I like. Now some are performing really well and some haven't been doing anything for a little while now. And that's the way it is. Not everything pumps all at the same time and dumps all at the same time. Unless it's in sort of a bear market, then a lot of things can dump at the same time. But even while most things are dumping, there'll be the odd thing that's pumping here and there. And then likewise in a bull market, you know, not everything generally pumps all at the same time. You might find 99% of things are pumping, but there'll be something that probably won't be as well. So some of my, you know, some of the things I'm in at the moment are have been very quiet for a while and other things just continue to rise. A lot of the things I'm in at the moment, they look like they're just kind of getting to their point where they're ready to start taking off again. So again, they've been forming a base. They haven't really been losing too much in dollar value. They've lost a little bit. That's because they pumped so hard before. I think they're all getting ready for their next leg up and I'm just not sure when exactly that's going to come. Let's have a look at the market first of all. All right, so well above $2 trillion, which is good. Uh, $2, two trillion uh, and $24 billion, uh, $240 billion, I think that might be. No, that's $24 billion, not $100 billion. But look, up 0.4%, but we can see Bitcoin just doesn't want to go over 60000 I do think uh, it's going to take a little while. I think, you know, the entire sort of market may travel sideways for a little while. We could even have a bit of a fake out to the downside to scare people. You know, if Bitcoin can't break that $60,000 mark, I think, you know, the bears are going to come in and they're going to probably try and dump the price to scare everybody. Uh, and then the bulls will come in and buy it, buy it all back up. And look, I do think the bulls and the bears are the same people some of the times anyway. The bulls are smart enough to know that they... You know, if they dump a little bit, and it's probably going to take more than a, little, than a little bit, but if they dump some, it can scare the market and then it has this bit of a crash and they can get in and buy more. So that is something that I'll be looking out for. But look, Bitcoin dominance. So again, it's dropping 53%. We're getting oh so close to that 50% dominance. And once we go below 50% dominance, and not just a quick, you know, little wick down there, like we're under 50% for a couple of hours or not even a full day, or maybe just a day and then we're straight back up to 55%, then that doesn't count. But once we start staying below 50% uh, in this market, BTC dominance, altcoins are really going to start to move but again it's not like it happens just instantly we could travel sideways with bitcoin dominance just slowly dropping under 50 percent before things really start to take off and again once we get into the charts we'll have a look at that and we can see what i mean gas all right that's pretty low i think the lowest i've seen it for quite some time was about 79 so we're not too far off there uh, ethereum dominance is dropping as well all right, we can see a bit of a sort of bloodbath in the last 24 hours. Well, not a bloodbath, but anyway, we've had a sell-off. Nothing sort of too crazy. But again, it's the weekend, so Saturday here in Australia. I am waiting to see if not so much tomorrow's uh, Australian time, because that's Sunday for us. It'll be more Australian Monday time, whether there is that standard Sunday sell-off that we've been seeing for quite some time. Or did that come on sort of our Friday uh, slash Thursday. Because again, early in this year and late last year, the sell-offs were coming sort of, you know, Thursday night here, Australia, Friday morning, which is sort of Thursday night over in the States. Uh, and that's where the sell-offs were happening. And then it was all picking up very, very quickly on the Monday, uh, sort of ch Monday night, Tuesday morning here in Australia slash Monday morning in the States. But now it's been happening on the actual weekends. So the actual sort of Sunday has been the worst day. So it's going to be interesting to see if that continues to play out. All right, let's have a look. Last 24 hours, has anything really pumped? All right, yep, we've got things pumping quite well. So Wave's doing quite well. Uh, KuCoin, there we go. Uh, zero, uh, zero X. Basic attention token, Thor chain, Filecoin starting to pick up. It really uh, took a bit of a hammering and we'll have a look. It pumped right up. 
uh, and then it's really dumped off and now I think it's starting to look pretty good again though honestly but again we'll have a look at that on the charts pancake swap Tezos V chain continuing to do nice uh, that's been picking up for a while and engine continuing to do quite well uh, and again we're gonna have a look at V chain Filecoin uh, and engine coin chart wise to sort of see where they're they are and whether they're a good buy or not at least in my opinion again never financial advice I'm no expert on any of this but I do like to think I'm at least somewhat knowledgeable not a complete not a rookie anyway let's put it that way all right what hasn't done well though because we saw there was some red there in the last 24 hours it didn't look like anything major but has there been any kind of big dumps in the last 24 hours not really I mean wink yeah down you know nearly 12% but when you're up 192% so that basically means they were 12 uh, sorry 200% in a week no one's worried about that but this may be the start of a bigger correction so dense down reserve token holotron you know uh, uh, Rweave BitTorrent Ethereum Classic Swiss Borg Helium no real major losses though I mean again for me 24 hour wise at least is what we're talking 15% or more and whether it's to the upside or the downside so if it's to the upside good gain uh, if it's to the downside then that's uh, a fairly reasonable loss but anything under 15% is generally I'm not too concerned about it loss wise uh, and gains wise anything under 15% I don't consider it a good gain but any gain is a good gain we always need to remember that I'm not complaining if I get a 5 or 6% gain at all it's just I um, don't get too excited it's really that 15 plus in 24 hours that I'm usually fairly excited by so the gains are pretty good there and the losses really fairly minimal and that's pretty good but again we still got to see is that Sunday you know kind of sell-off going to come because usually Sunday is the bigger day and we might see some more downside in the market enough that maybe this drops below two trillion again maybe we'll just have to wait and see all right let's start off with BTC where are we at with BTC so we can see we've been trading basically sideways for a long time so again since the 21st of February now how long can this last we spoke about this this can last a while so we've been going for nearly sort of two months ish but when this loads so if we basically go from here the 7th of May 2020 to really I guess we could go kind of around about here to September that is months worth of sort of sideways action it dipped below retested it dipped below retested it sat just below it sat just above it and really somewhere around about here is where it started to move away so that is months and months and months of sideways action and that absolutely could happen because that is still part of this bull run it's not always just crazy up because when we do have crazy ups we have some pretty crazy downs but then the market lulls for a while it gets nice and quiet and this is accumulation zone right here and I mean during this time altcoins were probably doing not too bad so again while things are traveling sideways that generally means accumulation particularly in a bull market and if you think we're still in a bull market like I do then that's accumulation time because once it gets you know there's only so much accumulation it can be done before the you know the kettle going off like I said it's simmering simmering and then it just starts to boil and then once it starts to boil you get these kind of moves and really to about here so could we see months and months of this going on I do think we could look how many months I don't know maybe this could sort of you know simmer and just go sideways and through till about sort of June or July before it then really starts to make its next move up I do think that is possible whether it plays out that way or not I don't know but we can definitely see you know this was kind of the peak for Bitcoin and it's just it's now using that old resistance as support see old resistance was used as support was used as resistance there and now it's a bit of resistance and support there and now it's a bit of resistance 
But I do think we're going to eventually break that. It's just when that happens, I don't know. The $60,000 barrier, people continue to take profits there. But people continue to buy it there as well. Not quite at 60000 because it gets sold off. But, you know, the fifty-seven, fifty-six thousand dollars $56,000 range is just getting bought up at the moment. And I think that will continue to happen. I, th I think eventually... You know, the miners aren't selling as much. They still need to sell some. They've got to, you know, make sure they've got enough to stay uh, liquid and all the rest of it and pay the bills. But they don't have to sell as much as they want. Even they're holding on to it now. And on-chain data has showed that they're selling less and less. So eventually, that means the price is just going to start to move up because there's going to be more and more buyers, but less and less sellers. So something to keep an eye out on. All right, Ethereum has done something similar to Bitcoin. Now it has moved up, but we can see here, really, the old resistance, now it's just a bit of support, but we've got a bit of sideways traveling at the moment in Ethereum as well. I don't think Ethereum is ready to do any kind of crazy breakouts uh, at the moment. Again, I do see the market kind of traveling sideways for a while. Now look, I've been completely wrong before and I could be completely wrong again, because this is literally a guess, that's all it is. What I like to consider an educated guess, but it is just a guess. I just get the feeling like the bigger coins, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're going to travel sideways for a while. I don't think there's enough uh, money coming into them at the moment. I think, you know, institutions and that, they're still, you know, slowly buying. They're cautious with the market at the moment, because, particularly because it's not pumping. They like the fact that it's traveling sideways, so they will just quietly accumulate. They probably won't try and make any too you know, any really massive buys that will cause the market to ricochet up. And again, they do it all over the counter anyway. They're generally not buying from the spot market. So it's really more waiting for, you know, the retail to kind of get back in. And retail's not chasing too much crypto at the moment. But again, PayPal slowly getting ready to offer cryptocurrencies to the rest of the world they have only been doing it with the uh, European uh, sorry the US base uh, and I think they're slowly moving to the European base and then they'll go worldwide and so it slowly will start to build but that's also what makes me think this could be a slow burn for a little while but having said that come Monday everything could just take off just to prove me wrong and look it's done that if you've watched my videos I've made some statements and it's gone completely the other way but that is just the feeling I get at the moment that we are just in this kind of ranging motion the volatility is not too big you know we do have some volatility here I mean in Ethereum what do we have here there we go, we had a 40% dip there, so that was pretty harsh, but I mean, that was back in fe February. We're already sort of, you know, getting towards uh, May now, so it was a little while ago, but since then, you know, the volatility has been fairly small. But usually what happens is when the volatility pans out for a while, you get an explosive move, and in a bull market, it's generally to the upside, and that's where I believe. So that's what I'm looking for with the bigger coins. But now let's go to the smaller coins. So let's start with XRP. So a lot of talk about XRP at the moment and how it's made big moves. Look, against the dollar it has, but the dollar's been falling anyway. And, and I'm not hating on XRP. I really want XRP to do well. But at the moment, people are getting a little bit excited. But all XRP has done is come back and retest its lows. Now that in itself could mean that XRP is a really, really good buy though. Because maybe... All this kind of FUD against the dollar, it's definitely gone up. I think it's trading at a dollar six now. And originally, you know, it was down at 20 cents, 18 cents, and that many, you know, about a year ago, I got some at 22 cents. I think I got some at 20 cents actually. So now against Bitcoin though, we can see it's just retesting this old sort of support. So what we need to wait and see before I'd make any crazy moves on XRP, unless you think it's going to the moon, then you do you. But for me, I want to see it at least hold this. I don't want to see that it just pumps up and falls away because that's what it's done before back in February. Touched it and then just fell away. So that is absolutely a possibility right now. So for me, I'm not getting too excited on XRP. I want to see it at least come up and start to hold this and use this as support, not as resistance and bounce off it. I want to see it use as support. And if it can do that, then I'll probably be looking at getting into XRP because look at the upside. Now, again, this is against Bitcoin, not the dollar. 
you know it's going up in the dollar value but bitcoin is still uh sort of outpay well it's not at the moment xrp is catching it but it's just catching up to some old sort of support if we can use that support as support and not use it as resistance i'll definitely start to be more bullish on xrp but for the moment i'm not pulling the trigger on it and again it still has the sec law case even though some signs look you know somewhat positive for it i just can't jump into it yet but that's me you do you that's what i'm looking at and again it has used this as support for quite a long time you know it almost bounced off its support used it as support bit of resistance and it was support and since then it's just been resistance so i'm waiting to see if it can get over that and so basically it's at about the uh 1903 satoshi level that's where it needs to get and it's not even there yet it's currently 1770 nine satoshi so it's still got 200 satoshis to go before we know whether it can hold that as support or it's just going to be resistance and fall back down again right ren btc oh this coin it's been such a a funny one for me you know when i got into it sort of you know way back sort of oh, where was it around about here i mean it did so well i had this amazing move on it against btc and then it just really dropped off but again it came back and used old sort of resistance and support as its new support so we go sideways to where we are now and what we can see is this is basically sort of where it is old support uh, is now being used as new support again so it feels like because again if we just we could pull this line way back here and then it was also support back here so old all-time sort of highs become uh, the new support level and that's roughly where it is right now so for me I'm looking support 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 pumped up a little bit come back and now it's using support and it's just traveling sideways so for me I think Ren's looking pretty good at the moment now could this travel sideways for longer absolutely again the whole market could tr kind of travel sideways uh, for quite some time but as long as it's holding its ground against bitcoin then i'm okay but something we do need to consider is this could drop off and we come back down here now that's going to hurt a bit in satoshi levels because we're 1800 satoshis here and this would bring us back down to the 800 satoshi level so that had hurt and again i've been wrong before uh, and I could be wrong again, but it just looks like it's finding support here, and I think it could be getting ready for its next move. And you've got to remember, when this starts to outpace Bitcoin, and so starts to catch up and maybe test all-time all highs, the dollar value that it creates in that time is unbelievable. So again, we go from 1,800 Satoshis to 5,000 Satoshis. Now that's sounds pretty good in satoshi levels but then you convert that to dollar levels that will be unbelievable gains and whether it can break that old all-time high and then smash above it is what will be interesting but for me ren's looking pretty good at the moment filecoin now there's not a lot of data on filecoin but it did have a very good pump so again it all started a back about here in february so i mean i got filecoin for about 30 dollars and now it's worth about 172 dollars but it got up to i think nearly 300 dollars so excuse me it got its peak and we've had the sell-off and now are we starting to use old sort of resistance and support as support it looks like we might an old sort of all-time high that pumped above and now it's come back and started to use that so again we don't have a lot of data to go off but i think filecoin's looking pretty good and could be re getting ready to make another le leg up but it could come back down and sort of touch this level as well so against the satoshis so we're at 29,650 satoshis right now it is possible that we come back to 16,000 satoshis so that's going to hurt a little bit if we do but that's the thing you got to make your decision look it could come back and do this but really there's a lot more confluence around about here so filecoin i think is still looking pretty good it has had a hefty correction in the dollar value uh in the btc value not so much 
But for me, yeah, I would be willing to take a chance on Filecoin and I do plan on buying more, but I'm just not going to go too crazy into it in case it's coming back to the, again, 16, 1700 Satoshi level. So just keep an eye out. And again, maybe go into the smaller time frames, but I don't like to go into much smaller than the daily. I'm more a macro investor than a micro uh, investor. Really, micro stuff is more for the traders. I look at the macro. And again, look, we, it, this pumped up way so high against Bitcoin, but for very short time. And then it just fell to basically nothing. And everyone, uh, you know, kind of thought it died, formed this amazing base, had a bit of a pump. And again, so now it may come back down and test this before it goes back up because this could be a fake out but again maybe it's found its support right along here which marries up with some of this over here something to keep in mind all right so vt or v chain v chain thor at the moment like i like v chain and this is not hating on it in any way shape or form but it's on a massive run at the moment. So I just couldn't buy it. I'm definitely holding onto what I have. I have no plans on uh, doing too much with it. I may take some minor profits, but look, it's been up so much higher before. So we haven't even come back to test all time highs. We are very close to testing here. Now, again, this is against the Bitcoin uh, level at the moment. So this is where it's been before. So it's been up as high as 238 Satoshis. It's currently at 217 Satoshis. So it's pumped up and already come back. So for me, I wouldn't be jumping into VeChain at the moment. It's on a really good pump and the chances are it'll probably come back against Bitcoin and retest this, but maybe not as well. Maybe this is going to go up and retest its old all-time highs of 337 Satoshis and then continue on. Love Veet, love the platform. I'm just not sure it would be the best investment now. You would probably end up losing some. You've got to wait and see if it then starts to come back and starts to use this as support. If it pumps up and then starts to travel sideways for a while here, yes, maybe. But if it just continues to pump up, I'd be waiting for it to come back and retest somewhere around about here or somewhere around about here before I jumped into it. Again, not hating on Veet. Uh, just saying it's probably not the best buy at the moment because it's already pumped so much against Bitcoin. All right, Matic Polygon. So this is looking really good at the moment. So this white line here was the average. It was just kind of traveling at a dip below, then a jump above, dip below, jump above, and we've now lost this. So I'm now going to get rid of this line. There we go. I don't need that. That's been invalidated. But what we can see is... You know, a peak high becomes the new low. So we've got a peak high sort of over here becomes the new low. And then we can see it was a, although this was a red candle, this was a peak high. This is now being used to support and it's been traveling sideways for quite some time. And I am still super bullish on layer two scaling solutions. So this looks like it's just forming a brilliant base at the moment. Nothing too crazy to the upside, nothing too crazy to the downside. It is just a nice sideways motion. And this has been happening since the 10th of March. So quite some time now against Bitcoin. It is just traveling sideways, 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 sideways. And I think there's a good chance this will break out to the upside. So for me, Matic is looking pretty good. But again, we just need to keep in mind this may fail and maybe we have to come back down and test something like this. And I mean, against Bitcoin, that's really not too much. So 630 Satoshi level down to 548 Satoshi level. Not too bad, but maybe it's somewhere down around about sort of here as well. So maybe down to the 518 Satoshi level. But against Bitcoin, I think Polygon slash Matic is looking very nice at the moment. This looks like it's forming a brilliant base and could be a really, really good buying opportunity. Again, I have to stress this. It's not financial advice. Please make your own decisions. Don't just look at the charts that I've done and trust what I'm saying make your own decisions. Go and have a look at some other people. Maybe they're telling you something different or maybe they're telling you something completely the opposite. And maybe I'm completely wrong, which I have been before. But for me, this is looking pretty good and I may have to jump in and get myself some more Matic. This looks really, really nice. All right, secret network token. So again, I was really, really lucky. I got into it. Uh, oh God, where was it? I think we're going back to 
Oh, where are we? I think it was March 2020, somewhere around about there. So, well, anyway, I can't find it, but this is a token that has done extremely well. So, I think November 2020, uh, October, yeah. I got into it when it was Enigma, so that's why it's not going to show it. But basically, this coin did extremely well for me. I mean, when it was up here, uh, the dollar value is amazing. But have a look what's happened. Now, it's had a good retracement against Bitcoin. And look what it's done. It has found some support of uh, some old support and sort of slash resistance. So this has been resistance. It hasn't been able to come back. It was an old all-time high peak here. And a bit of resistance, resistance found support come back and found support and now it's just traveling sideways a little bit so for me this is looking pretty good now what we need to keep in mind is 5500 satoshis it looks like it could come back uh, around about a thousand satoshi so in dollars that would uh, be a little bit of a loss but the thing is it's already touched here. There's no guarantees it's going to come back and touch here. It could continue up or it could continue down. So again, for me, I wouldn't be throwing the kitchen sink at it at the moment, but I would, for me, again, I'm looking to yeah, build a position uh, in SRT again. So Secret Network, I did a video on it quite some time ago. I haven't done any reviews for a while. Uh, I may get back into some reviews, you know, in the comments down below. If there's something you want me to review, let me know. Uh, I, I spend a lot of time just doing chart analysis and, and news and things like that. Not as much in chart analysis, more news. But if you want me to have a look at a project and do a bit of a deep dive into it, let me know down in the comments and we'll have a look at that. But for me, this is starting to look uh, pretty nice and I am going to get back into it. I'm just not going to basically, you know, go all in because I know that it could come back down and test here. But maybe it's already done that and it's just up and up from here. Right, Engine Coin has been doing extremely well. Love Engine Coin, but for me, I wouldn't be buying it at the moment. It's just, look, look, that is just full parabolic sort of stuff. That is basically this repeating itself. And what happens when it does this? This is what happens. So just be very, very careful if you're in engine at the moment. Uh, yeah, good chance it's probably going to uh, have a bit of a sell off. But there's no guarantees in life. And again, so this is against Bitcoin. It's not to say engine can't, you know, continue to make money uh, in the dollar value. But if Bitcoin starts to go up, engine may not. And we can see engines already had a bit of a sell-off. So from 6,931 Satoshis down to 5,890 sort of Satoshi level. So, But look, maybe it is going to come back and start to use this as support. Like here, maybe this will be the new support. Who knows? But for me, engine, I wouldn't be buying it at the moment. And that's not hating on engine. I love engine. It's just had such a big move. All right, Aave. So one of my favorite DeFi projects. It has a pattern that just seems to repeat over and over again. Again, some old support and resistance becomes support. But every time, it generally breaks down below. So again, breaks down below the old support, but then comes up, uses it, breaks a little bit down below, pops up. And now what we're seeing is here's some old sort of support and resistance. And it's basically used it as support again. So for me... Aave is looking pretty good, but I just need to keep in mind that it does break down below. It doesn't go too far below. I mean, here, you know, here it is. So what's that? Uh, 3,184 Satoshis down to 1,772 Satoshis. So, you know, that hurts a little bit in the dollar value, but in the Satoshi level, not so much. But then... This time, it didn't go down anywhere near as much. So this went from 3,184 Satoshis down to, you know, 2,399 Satoshis. So that's not too much. But then look at the moves that it makes after that. So for me, I think Aave is still looking pretty good. And it looks like it's kind of found a base and it's just traveling sideways. I do think there's a chance that it's going to come down here. And so that's to the 5,596 Satoshi level. But that's not too much from where we currently are. So for me, I'll probably start to make some positions in Aave as well. Won't be throwing the kitchen sink at it. 
if it gets down to here this is where I'll probably start to go a lot more heavy into Aave but not too heavy because I know that generally it can come down a little bit so it may come down sort of you know into this kind of price range where it's previously been before this is where I'd really be throwing the kitchen sink at it if it got down to the 48,000 oh, sorry 4,000 851 satoshi level i would be all over Aave, but it's still looking pretty nice at the moment all right the graph again plays out very very similar it hasn't been around for long has a pump comes back down kind of uses almost all an uh old sort of resistance level as support it stayed above it had its big massive pump come down and it's used old sort of resistance as support and now it's just traveling sideways so i think the graph is looking pretty good at the moment and i'm going to be getting into the graph i mean there's a lot of projects out here and i've only got so much money but i'll basically just be dividing it up uh, it fairly evenly amongst the projects that are looking pretty good and these are the ones that i'm bullish on i really like all these projects now again that's not financial advice and that doesn't mean they're going to the moon and nothing can go wrong with them but the graph love what they're all about uh, love what Aave is all about love what synthetics networks all about we're going to get onto that and this is just looking really good at the moment against the btc level so the dollar value uh, has come down a little bit from its old all-time high but that's what happens but against bitcoin now it's just traveling sideways and holding well but the thing we need to remember is maybe bitcoin is gearing up for a big run and if bitcoin gets on a big run then all of these can fall down but eventually Bitcoin will stop running and then these will start to pump. So they're the things we need to keep in mind. And that's, I accept that. If these look really, really good and I'm like, yep, yeah. so I jump into them and then Bitcoin pumps, well, that's just the way. But what I know from previous experiences, I just need to hold on to these for long enough. And provided this isn't the end of the bull run, which I don't think it is, they're going to have their moment to shine and what I've lost will be made up, you know, by a lot you know i want to say tenfold it may not be made up in tenfold but they're generally going to well and truly eat up those uh sort of losses and go into you know unbelievable gains but again never financial advice but that's just the way things have played out previously so for me they're looking pretty good uh yeah and the graph is one that i'm going to be getting into now chain link Chainlink has been very, very interesting. For such a long time, it was just bouncing off this line. If it went below this, uh, it was well below its BTC value. And we can see back here in December of last year, it fell below. Now, it had this big, massive pump, and I thought it was going to get back up there, and uh, it fell below. But here was this line. As long as we stayed above this, it's still pretty bullish. And it has. And now, look at this also. Old resistance has now become new support. We dip below, and now it seems like we're just building a bit of a base. I think Chainlink might be getting ready to go on another move. Now again, no guarantees. This may fold, and then we have to may, we may have to come back down here. So at the moment, we're around about sort of, the support level that I'd be looking at is that 52,000 uh, Satoshi level, but it may come all the way back down to the 37,000 Satoshi level. But either way, I'm still happy to buy some more Chainlink at the moment. I'm just not throwing the kitchen sink at it, knowing that it may come down lower. But maybe this line here is the one that is now the support and that it dipped under. So keep a look out for Chainlink, but it's looking pretty good. Not as good as uh, some of the other things we looked at, you know, like the graph. I think the graph is looking really good. But Chainlink's a good project, and I would... I wouldn't be too hesitant to get into more chain link in here. Just like I said, not throwing the kitchen sink. Right, Synthetics Network. Right, it has been sort of traveling sideways for quite some time, particularly in the dollar value. But what we need to look here is again, we had some old sort of resistance, became support, traveled sideways, had its pump up, and now look where it's sort of traveling. And this looks like maybe some old sort of resistance and support Maybe it's found its point, and from here, it's getting ready to make its next leg up. Maybe not, though. So again, I'm, I'm happy to get into some more Synthetics Network at the moment, just not throwing the kitchen sink out at the moment, because this could be just a bit of a fake out before we roll down and come back down and test here. But I am happy to buy some more Synthetics Network, just kind of chipping away at it, not throwing too much at it. Again, we've already looked at some other coins. They're the ones I am most bullish on, uh, based on those chart patterns. But again, if Bitcoin suddenly gets on its next big move, then all these will be invalidated. But 
like I said, I just simply hold. I go, rightio, I was wrong about that, but I know the next altcoin momentum is coming. And again, we go back to here. Bitcoin dominance is at 53.5%. It's getting lower and lower and lower. So even if Bitcoin does get on a big move, the altcoins are still generally going to do pretty well. And particularly if Bitcoin, uh, if, don't get me wrong, if Bitcoin gets on a big move, this will jump up again. But I can't see this getting back up to sort of 60, 70, 75% anytime soon. Now that I've said that, I'll probably be wrong. So that's what I'm looking at. So, so many coins are looking pretty good. So again, GBTC is looking pretty good. Uh, SRT is looking pretty good. Matic is looking really, really good against Bitcoin at the moment. Should Bitcoin get in a run, then that's going to hurt. Filecoin, I think, is still looking pretty good. It looks like it might be forming support here. But again, maybe we have to come back down to sort of here. Still, I'm happy to take those losses because I really like the uh, Filecoin. Ren BTC, again, had a bit of a breakout and now it's just been kind of basing against Bitcoin for quite some time. So again, had a big pump and now it's come back to here. So I'm really, really happy with that. And XRP, like I said, I'm just waiting to see if XRP can turn this into support and not resistance against BTC. If it can do that and hold that, I'll be getting in back into XRP, even if the SEC trial isn't over and done with. Again, I won't be throwing the kitchen sink at it. I wouldn't do that. Well, there's the SEC thing going on, but it will look a whole lot more attractive. But we've seen this before. It's already got up there against Bitcoin and then it's rejected hard. So let's like really start to focus in. It is just, it's resistance at the moment. Resistance, resistance, resistance. So this could fall off. But if it can manage to pop above and it'll probably pop above and then fall back and come back and hold this as support, then I'll be happy. All right, that's it from me. So again, watch out. The Sunday uh, correction, it's been in play for quite a while now. It still may happen, but it doesn't always happen and it may change. Now maybe it's going back to the sort of, you know, Friday morning, Thursday night uh, retracement, which we already saw. So stay safe. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good and I'll see you next time.